In our Sunrise Smart Start, a group of 10 bipartisan senators said they reached a deal on an infrastructure package. The issue now, party leaders from both sides in the White House have yet to sign off on it. Joined live by Washington correspondent Alexandra Limong once again this morning from D.C. Alexandra, good morning. Let's talk about the details of this new infrastructure deal and what some of the challenges might be. Good morning. Well, the bipartisan infrastructure deal calls for spending about $1.2 trillion over the course of eight years, and it focuses on spending that money on mostly traditional infrastructure projects, things like fixing roads and bridges and railways. The issue, though, is that while these 10 mostly moderate senators like Mitt Romney, Kirsten Sinema, Joe Manchin, for example, also Lisa Murkowski is part of the group. While they may have agreed to the deal, it's pretty unclear that anyone else will sign off on it. Not only are the party leaders, you know, not saying they endorse it yet, but it's also unclear whether the White House will sign off of, on it. And that's because it seems to exclude any money for fighting climate change. And we know that was a huge part of President Biden's infrastructure plan. He wanted to build, you know, kind of this nationwide network of electric car charging stations and also change the entire uh, federal government vehicle fleet to electric cars. And since those priorities of his are excluded, it's unclear whether this this plan will go anywhere. Well, let's talk more about the president's agenda in Europe as the G7 summit gets underway. Yeah, the president and the G7 leaders will be meeting today. And according to the White House, President Biden's focus will be focusing on how to achieve a more fair and inclusive global economy. They say he is calling for a minimum global corporate tax rate of at least 15 percent. And according to the White House, the other G7 leaders will agree to calling for this. The White House says that this will be, you know, one step in ending what they call a race to the bottom as low-income countries race to lower and lower their corporate tax rates. And the White House says that that you know, so-called race to the bottom is preventing the middle class from growing and preventing a lot of these countries from improving their own economies. So according to the White House, the G7 leaders will endorse calling for that plan. All right, Alexandra, thank you so much for your coverage. Yesterday, the Biden administration, as we mentioned earlier, announced it would send 500 million doses of the COVID vaccine to 92 low and lower middle income countries and 55 member states of the African Union. Well, News 8 is your local election headquarters. Early voting for primaries begins tomorrow and will go through June 20th this year. Several important races happening in both the city and surrounding towns. Araketa Cost is live this morning with what you need to know. Araketa, good morning. Good morning, Mark. Well, Monroe County Board of Elections Commissioner Jackie Ortiz says this time is always super exciting. And while we just came off a huge presidential race in the fall, this uh, this preparation for the primaries is actually the same amount of work. Early voting is also a fairly new practice uh, in New York State as of 2019. You will have 14 sites in Monroe County to choose from for nine days starting tomorrow. Ortiz says last fall early voting was an incredible hit. While the primaries tend to have a lower turnout, she's hoping and begging the community to bring that same energy again. Some of the big races include county court judges, city council at large, a few positions on BOCES, the mayor, and all county legislature seats. And if you want to get involved beyond just voting, Ortiz says they're looking for poll workers and interpreters. We have a very healthy number of sites, and so it is critical for us to be able to fill those sites. Um, so we are conducting training all the way up until the last possible moment to make sure that we fill every slot. So if there are folks that are interested, um, we have some last minute classes, and we also have an online training option. To qualify to be a worker, you need to be 18 years of age or older and registered to vote. Ortiz says that's important so they can divide party affiliation equally among workers. In Rochester, Erica Cost, News 8. All right, Erica, thank you. Of course, you have the option to vote by absentee ballot as well. Applications must be postmarked by June 15th. They can be found online at the Monroe County Board of Elections website. Well, cool start on this Friday morning. James, a good morning to open up the windows, cool down the house before it warms up again, right? That's a great idea. Definitely want to let the fresh air in. And uh, you might have those. Uh, 
You might have those heat seaters, uh, seat heaters. There we go. Yep. I think I got those switched got around right. there. <laughs> and there we go. Yeah, 50s <laughs> this morning. It's a cool start, but we've got some nice clear skies uh, out there. It is Friday. Why not uh, get a golf round in this morning? Going to be better than this afternoon as we have a couple of showers, showers and storms mixed in there. Bus stop forecasts coming up at the end of the show. All right, James, thank you. Let's get a look at the roads now with our sunrise traffic. Uh, a couple of accidents we've been watching over the last 20 minutes or so. One on Dewey Avenue at Glendale Park in Rochester. The other in the city on Monroe Avenue at Dartmouth Street. 390, 490 you see in the view here, and 590 all on time at last check. In other news this morning, RPD officials say officers did not do anything wrong during a recent incident with a suspect on Remington Street. Police releasing blue light camera video yesterday. Here it is showing the arrest of Jarvis Lewis last Saturday. Chief Cynthia Harriet Sullivan says the officers involved were not in the wrong and apprehended a wanted man. However, local advocates say there is more to uncover from this arrest. Let's be honest, it just doesn't look pretty. But that's the reality sometimes of uh, what law enforcement uh, has to deal with. But the goal there was to get him handcuffed and get him secured, which is what you saw eventually happen. There's a whole lot of information we don't have. The body-worn camera footage that has audio. You know, not releasing that and only releasing this footage gives us an incomplete picture. Well, Lewis was ultimately charged with assault in the second degree, criminal possession of a weapon, criminal possession of a controlled substance, as well as resisting arrest. A 13th woman has come forward saying she was sexually harassed by Monroe County legislator Ernest Flagler Mitchell. This after the DA's office released a report determining he violated the county code of ethics. The newest allegation claims the alleged victim called the legislator in August of 2020 for support with her CPS case. She says he invited her to his office where Flagler Mitchell allegedly closed the door and offered to help in exchange for sexual favors. He has, uh, says the allegation is not true. Well, a Rochester neighborhood will undergo a major ago, transformation. Mayor Lovely Warren announcing advancements in the Bull's Head Revitalization Project. It marks the western gateway to downtown and several streets, major streets in the city, including West Main and Shiloh Ave. Mayor Warren says the city is working to uplift that neighborhood. Jiva Theater will host its Curtain Call 2021 event tonight. It's the largest fundraising event of the year. The virtual gala will feature live stream performances by Jiva artists. The evening will also include a wine poll, a raffle, and the conclusion of Jiva's online auction. Curtain Call begins at 6 o'clock tonight. Tickets can be purchased on Jiva's website, jivatheater.org. Let's get a look at our Family First segment now. Looking for a way to get your family in shape? You might want to consider the DASH diet. According to a recent study from Harvard, the DASH diet can reduce cholesterol, blood pressure, and lower damage to your heart muscles. Doctors say along with exercise, it can help you lose weight. Andy DeSantis, author of the book, The 28-Day DASH Diet Weight Loss Program, says it includes all the food groups and limits sodium intake. That's a great starting point, like double down on your fiber intake and your protein intake. Fiber and protein keep you very full. They help regulate your blood sugar levels. So one of my favorite foods, which is also part of the DASH diet, which is high in both fiber and protein, is legumes, lentils, chickpeas, kidney beans. Well, it also includes lots of whole grains, fruits, vegetables, low-fat dairy, some fish and poultry, and small amounts of nuts and seeds. You can eat some red meat, sweets, and fats in small amounts. Coming up next week, we are talking with Andy about uh, fitness routines and other diet options. Of course, before you start any new diet or exercise program, very important to talk with your doctor first. Time now for the GRE Morning Business Report. L3 Harris receiving the U.S. Department of Defense's highest industrial security practices award for its communication systems facilities here in Rochester. The DOD says the facilities establish and maintain, quote, the highest standards in security procedures and security program management. It is the 17th consecutive year L3 Harris has been recognized with the award. Well, the cost of living in the U.S. rose in May. According to the Labor Department, consumer prices increased six-tenths of a percent and five percent from a year ago. The price of used cars and trucks pushing inflation higher. Food prices and shelter also going up. 
Well, fewer Americans filing for unemployment benefits last week. According to the Labor Department, first-time filings for weekly jobless claims fell by 9,000 to 376,000 claims. The number moves the needle closer to pre-pandemic levels when jobless claims averaged about 200,000 per week. All right, listen to this. Airbnb says it is selecting a dozen people to live a nomadic life for 10 months. The program is called Live Anywhere on Airbnb. People can hop around short-term rentals on the site's tab. You'll even get a transportation allowance. Interested travelers can apply online through the end of the month. The remote experience starts in September. All right, here's what some folks might be talking about at the water cooler this morning. The European Championships kicking off today. The highly anticipated soccer event takes place every four years, showcasing Europe's best talent. Last year's tournament was canceled, of course, because of the pandemic. Back in 2016, Cristiano Ronaldo and Portugal claimed the title with a dramatic win over France. Mm, you know what else people are talking about today? Mm. Uh, the weekend. I thought you were going to say pictures of yes. Cristiano Ronaldo. But <laughs> <laughs> those are popular, too. Yeah. But, yeah, the weekend as the well. The weekend, yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> right. One more day of school for the kids and uh, really kind of winding down the year here. I may have to retire this graphic uh, pretty soon. Yes, but and my kids don't, don't need it. No, Let's yeah, see. it's right. Uh, I don't know if you'll get a lot of complaining on retiring that graphic <laughs> for a couple of months. Right. The yeah. kids are ready. I think so. And I think today, the teachers are, too. Mm -hmm. Today might be a tough day uh, <laughs> for the kids to uh, stay still in the classroom. As uh, clouds increase in the afternoon, temperatures in the 70s. We do have a couple of showers and storms that do pop up uh, by the afternoon in the Finger Lakes, but otherwise, the weekend mostly dry, but not completely dry. Isolated showers Saturday morning, then off and on showers uh, on Sunday. Mm. All right, looking pretty good there. Thank you so much. It's been a fun week, you know, here on it's Sunrise. It's always a fun week with you, too, and yep. I'm looking forward to doing it again next Let's week. Let's do it again All next right. week. Why not? We'll take a little break first, though. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching News 8 at Sunrise. Our next update coming up in 30 minutes. CBS This Morning is up next. Have a great day.